Sige. Okay, so yan. Again, everyone, um, good morning. So the first stop for AAP or English for Academic and uh, Professional Purposes um, is that we will be discussing today um, what is it all about and how to write an essay because basically all throughout the, se the semester, what you will do in my subject is to write. So the first stuff for you to do is um, learn, uh, uh, like first the pages that I've, I've given you on our group chat so that everything, every communication will be in there. First reminder, remember that Green Pen Republic page is only for your output, digital output only. Okay, no questions, no queries about the subjects or anything. Just send your output there with the given format. Um, while the um, AAP class page will be for your questions, queries, for the things that you want to ask. Okay, you can um, send personal messages there. Um, is that clear? Just raise your hand, put, um, click the reaction button whenever you... Uh, I have questions, or you, if you want, you can open your audio so that we can interact through uh, that communication. Okay, so sorry for today because I I broke my stylus, so I will do the traditional one and have uh, whiteboards for now. But for, in the succeeding one, I will be using the stylus. Sorry, I really need to write because we will be discussing essay today. Okay, so... Um, any questions so far? Okay, we'll be discussing now. First, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, can you see it? Let me do this. No, 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 not yet. Wait, let me see what happened. Okay, are you seeing it now? Yes, Paul. Okay. Okay. I need to share this first. Okay. So now let me let us discuss what is um, AAP or English for Academic and Professional Purposes. So I will be your teacher for the whole semester. I am Jenna de Guzman Fermin, and we will be dealing with first semester of school year 2021 and to 2022. You'll be doing this for your grade 12 subject. Um, all the requirements are all will be dealing with all the modules. Nothing more, nothing less. So as long as you understood the module and you pass everything on that module, um, we will not have any problem towards your grades. Um, in this first semester, you'll be having six modules in different, um, you'll be receiving them. I want you to compile them. Is that clear with you? You're not returning the module itself. I want you to compile it in a folder and you will pass it to me at the end of the quarter. Clear po ba tayo doon? um so that uh, other people can use it in the future and it's already in a folder um but the answer sheets will be passed as as per scheduled am i clear okay yes Paul. okay good thank you jordan um what is AAP? basically it's concerned with communication skill it's an english subject whether you like it or not you will use english as a medium so ayoko nang makakarinig next time Na mapedi pong tagalog because this is not the subject that um, we are talking about. Okay, you can do it another in another subject, but not in here because our focus is for you to learn um, how to use English. But here, as you can see, it is about study purposes. I will not teach you grammar. I will not teach you the tenses of the verb, but we will be discussing. Um, what is the use of English in the formal education? The teaching of English with a specific aim, what do I want to do? In the previous years that you have, you learned about literature, you, you learned about grammar, you learned about spelling, your vocabulary, but this time we will be discussing about, um, I will use English for what? So before you write an essay, you should already know 
what, uh, where, or how will I use it? Is that clear, guys? Yes, po. Yes, po, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So, what is a, uh, this is a language research and instruction, meaning it focuses on communicative needs. Uh, I don't know if this would be a good news for you. Basically, we will not be checking your grammar. I will not be checking on it. Sometimes I would encircle it so that you can review what went wrong. But in general, we will be dealing with what did you write, not how you write it. Okay? So, medyo hindi tayo sa grammar. Pero there would be plus points if you would be doing it correctly. Of course. But it's not our main goal. But if I were you, practice. Um, for example, you will type it and check it online, the grammar, grammatical rules, so that you can see, saan ba ako mali? What could I improve? So that's how it goes. Pero hindi natin ire-required because sabi ko nga, what we are looking for is what you have written. Ano ang sinulat nyo? Okay. Ano ang sinulat nyo at how you, you write it? May sense ba? Yun yung magiging focus natin. So, what else? So, I want you to see this diagram. Ayan, English teaching. This is what uh, we will have been doing mula nung inaral nyo si English. Ano daw yung mga... Um, Paano daw natin inaaral si English? Yung iba, because it's their mother tongue or it's their native language, madali lang sa kanila. They, uh, they discuss, they teach, they learn English as is. Pero sa atin, since we have English as a second language, therefore, we have to adjust. Or sometimes we call it English as a foreign language. But for us, we call it second language because we are not learning it as elective. For example, Mandarin is we learn it as a foreign language. But for us, English is a second language next to Filipino. So para maintindihan nyo, usually, pag second language, what is my specific purpose of using it? Dito sa AAP, our purpose is two. Purposes are two. The first one is occupational or professional. And the second one is the academic purposes. Okay? So we will not just be dealing with academic, but also after I graduate or if I don't intend to go to college and I just want to work, what could be the help of AAP or this subject in my work? For example, writing a resume or such or writing an application letter. So you should be knowing those kinds of things. Um, so in academic purposes, Simply lang po mga anak. When we say English for academic purposes, um, how we use English in school or study uh, cases or situation. Academic means school, study, education, anything that you want to connect with it. Paano mo siya gagamitin sa pag-aaral mo? So that is what AAP is all about for academic side. For professional side, I hope in this subject you will be learning how to use everything that you will learn here to your um, future work or to your next job after college or after senior high school. Um, just raise your hand if you want, if you have questions. Okay, guys. So basically, ito lang siya. Um, what do you need? And now that you're in grade 12, that's what we will be learning in AAP. Um, what else? I will not dwell with this. Um, it should be communicative. What What do we mean by, by communicative? Many of you would say, Mamang hirap naman po mag-English. I understand that because when I was young, yun din ang problema ko. That's my problem. I'm not very good with English. So I need to do, um, an, uh, we call it Carabao English in the Philippines or we call it Barok. When you say words in English but actually the grammar is wrong, but it's fine. Because in this subject, it should be communicative. And when we say communicative, it means as long as you, I understand or your classmate understands, wala, wala tayo magiging problema doon. That's what we meant by communicative. No matter the grammar is 
But if I were you, I would learn the correct one. But it's not the focus now because you have 10 years. From grade 1 to grade 10, you have 10 years of learning the basic. So it's not my job today, but my job is to make you communicatively uh, uh, speaker, communicative speakers of English. Okay. Um, what else? Any question? You have questions so far. Are you sure? Okay, if none, I will be the one to wait, wait, let me just end my slide show. I will be sharing now other Okay. I have here your module. Hawak nyo ba yung module nyo? Or nabasa na ba? Nakita man lang ba ang mga module? Nabasa na po. Nabasa na po. Wow, very good. Kung nabasa na po. Okay. So, this is your module, if I'm not mistaken. Um, for sure, may mga tanong. Okay, credits to the National, DepEd National Office or Central Office because this is from them. So, we just cater them. Um, yeah. So, this module, this is self-explanatory about the guidelines on how to use the language. But basically, these are the ones that you should be learning all throughout the semester. Buong semester ang pinag-uusapan dito. Baka kasabihin nyo, ma'am, ang dami-dami na ma'am po. Yes, there are 13 competencies that you should learn. But today, all you need to do, <clears throat> we will be dealing with this number three, uh, the components of three-part essay. We will be discussing it today. So we will start your module with lesson one. It is about the academic text structures. Um, basically, when you see academic text structures, anong pumapasok sa isip? Anyone from the group? Jordan Valiente po, 12 Dalton. Yes, Anna. Ano po, pag, uh, when we say academic text po, it's based with facts and solid basis. Okay, very good. So basically, not every writing is an academic writing. Correct, si Jordan. It has to be about basic facts or at least a, it's factual and it's not just because you said so. Sabi ko nga dati, when we are studying this in college, academic texts are texts na wala kaming pakialam kung anong sinasabi mo uh, or anong opinion mo. But we are more focused on um, what your, is your opinion based on facts or you just made it up. So that's the difference. Um, next thing is, I want you to take note of this three. These are the three things that we sh you should be learning today. First one is defining what is an academic text. Pag sinabi ni Ma'am Jenna or ng kahit sino pa, uh, lovely, what do you mean by academic text? Ah, Ma'am, academic text is as simple as that. Second is determine text structure of an academic text. When you see an essay or any write-up, when you see it, you can easily say, Ah, Ma'am, this is an academic text. And the third one, explain the components of a three-part essay. Um, this is not included in the module. Ulitin ko, this is not included in a module because basically you have been taught what is an essay all your life. Tama ba? Tama, tama. You have been taught what is an essay. You have been writing essay all your life. Since grade one, for example, my vacation, natatandaan, my, my Christmas, autobiography, my mother, my father, my Valentine's Day, kung natatandaan nyo, yun yung mga unang essay na pinaggagawa nyo. So, eh, mga ano pang discuss nyo? This is my practice. Hindi ko siya nilagay sa module because I believe, alam nyo na dapat kung ano ang essay. So, ang nakalagay sa module are just reminder what is an essay and what are its parts. But, what I decided to do on this online class is to make it easier for you to write essay. For beginners, what am I practicing? What am I doing ever since I was, for example, in elementary school? Okay? Let me see. Just a little bit. I need to capture some things. Okay. Next one is, if you don't have question, 
let's have now the lesson. So first one, to guide you on your module, the first thing that you would do is I want you to see if you still remember what you have done or your, on your research subject. Simply, if you are doing a uh, printed module, you just have to write it um, in order, the parts of our research. But if you are doing it in digital way, you can just put uh, edit it on your phone and put the numbers one onwards on the side of each part. For example, presentation of research problem, it's on the second. So you just have to put number two in this part. Are we clear? This is just what you yes. will, will have to do on this activity. On the second one, what is it? So this is the lesson. Always remember when you see the part, what it is, I'm uh, sorry, what is it? It's all about um, the lecture. This is the lecture part. So I want you to remember the first task I told you about earlier, the first objective is to know what is an academic text. So basically, there are just three things that you have to, to remember. You have your module. This is what written on your module. There are three things. Academic text is one, formal, two, objective, and three, technical. Okay? One, it is formal by avoiding casual or conven conversational language such as contraction. Is there anyone who knows what is contractions? Any idea about it? When we say contractions, those are the words such as, for example, um, I'll or I will. It should be I will, but we usually in informal language or in informal conversation, we say I will. But always remember in academic text, it is uh, not wrong, but it's not that acceptable because we are clinging to the fact that academic is all about formal language. As much as possible, do it spelled out. For example, don't, you can do it as do not or can't as cannot. Are we clear with contractions? Do you understand it? Yes. Okay. For informal vocabulary, okay. Um, oh, where is, oh, no, no. Mm, I use, sorry, for informal, for, sorry, for formal uh, vocabulary, it should be the words that is acceptable in the dictionary, as simple as that. But I want you to learn something new today. The word vocabulary. When you say vocabulary, it's the word that you know. So if you don't know the word, basically, it's not on your vocabulary. That's why in Filipino, we say, wala yan sa vocabulario ko. Pag alam mo yung salitang academic, nasa vocabulary mo na siya. But if you don't know, it's not on your vocabulary. Naintindihan si vocabulary. Any word that you know, any word that you can define, any word that you can use, but if you cannot use it, it's not your vocabulary. I hope it's clear with that part. We are clear with that part. And the second one is objective. At least sinasabi ko kanina. Wala naman akong pake kung anong opinion mo. No. Basically, that's the informal way of saying it. But basically, when we say objective, it's not, it's impersonal. It's not about how you think about it, but how you think about it with evidences. For example, um, you read or you you read a book or you watch a movie. If you do it, afterwards you are asked, tinanong ka ng nanay mo, anon ba anak yung napanood mo sa sine? So this is the subjective one. Nanay, maganda siya. Mom, it's a very good movie. I like it so much. That's the subjective one. But if it's an objective one, nanay, maganda siya. Mom, it's a very good movie. Teka, ma'am, baka sabihin nyo, parehas lang po yun ah. Yes, objective and subjective are the same. Parehas kang nagbibigay ng opinion. But what are the difference? Differences. First one, in objective, may kadugtong. Kay, kay subjective, ma'am, the, the movie is beautiful. Tapos ang usapan. Mom, I like the movie. Tapos ang usapan. But for objective one, the thing that you will do is 
um, you have to give emphasis on evidences, just like Jordan said a while ago. You need to give give proof. For example, mom, mag mom, the the movie is beautiful and I like it because it's not just simply because I like it. Yung pag tinanong ka, um, naiinip ka na ba? Yes. Bakit? Ala lang. Malungkot ka ba? Yes. Bakit? Ala lang. Those are subjective. But when we say objective, and this is what we need for academic text, text is that, um, bakit ka malungkot? Because merong dahilan, may specific thing. Why did you like the movie? Because on this part, or the plot, or the actresses, or this part of the movie gives me the chills, it gives me great emotion, the actors are great, the, the story is great, the music is awesome. So those kinds of things. Naintindihan po si objective. Yun yung pagkakaiba niya sa subjective. Kaya nga, pumapasok doon si informal vocabulary. Sa subjective kasi, you can use any language that you want. That's the big difference. Pero dito kay objective, yes, you can, but because it is based on the facts, basically, na, na for force ka, without knowing it, na for force ka na gamitin si uh, formal language. And the third one is, it is technical. Will you please read this for me, anyone? This part. The highlighted one. What is the word technical has to do with academic text? Uh, please state your name first and then please kindly read it for me. Labi, are you, are you there? Yes po, ma'am. Sige, anak. Will you please read what is uh, technical, the word technical has to has something to do with academic. It is technical by using vocabulary specific to the discipline to be a good academic writer. You will need to learn the specific styles and structures for your discipline as well as for each individual writing task. Okay, thank you, lovely. Basically, that's it. In academic text, you need to use specific words. Okay? In using that, you have to focus on the fact that in each discipline, like you, you're in Yum, so you'll become a teacher, you'll become a police a policeman, a police officer, you will become people in humanities, under humanities and social sciences. You will be dealing different uh, words when compared sa ibang, um, what do you call it, strand. So, yun yung ating kailangan pag-aralan. For example, the word expire. Anyone who knows what is the word expire means? Expire. Anyone who knows the meaning of it? No? Wala? <laughs> okay, the word expire means out, out of date, correct? If some food is expired, you cannot eat it because it passed the date. When your load <laughs> or your promo on your mobile uh, provider um, is expired, you cannot use it anymore because there is just limit. So you, you reach that limit already. So basically, for us, that's just it. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng expired. But if you will talk to medical people, expire means death. Someone died. So when medical people talk about someone expired on room 214, it only means that someone died. So I just want you to know how different discipline is using different words based on their uh, jargon or the words specific to their discipline. Any questions with the three? Formal, objective, technical. Tandaan po yung tatlo na yun, ha? Academic texts are always, always formal, objective, and technical. Hindi pwedeng mawala kahit isa dyan. Question? So, in summary, no. akade okay, very good. In summary, academic text is a text, a write-up, a writing output that you do, read, write, or share, which is used in school or education. Writing in education, reading in education, or for education. That's it. Yun lang siya kasimple. And what could you check to know if it's an academic text? One, it, it's, it is formal. Two, it is based on objective things. And three, it is technical. 
So, nasagot na natin yung dalawang objective natin. I hope you'll learn what is the meaning of academic text. And the second one is, how can I know that I'm reading an academic text? Oh, sorry. Next skip. So, these are some examples. I will let you read it on your module, the literary analysis, research paper, and dissertations. These are examples of academic text. Just see how it's different for, for, from each other. And then... We have the last part already, structure. So how will I write? Or what should be the structure of our, an essay that I am writing? So basically, this is it. This is the most important. Remember, the most important feature of academic writing is structure. It sets it apart from other types of writing. Okay? A well-structured text enables the reader to follow the argument and navigate the text. Okay, in academic writing, it should be it should have a clear and logical flow of the essay. Kaya lang, laging tanong, mamanghirap po ng essay. Sige nga o, oh, taas kamay ng papayag na um, magsusulat kayo ngayon ng essay, which are 20 paragraphs. At ang deadline ay ngayon. Ngayong araw na ito. Taas nga yung kamay. Wala? <laughs> Magsusulit ka ngayon, ngayon ng 20 paragraphs. Wala. Um, one paragraph. Ngayon ipapas. Okay lang. Ayaw nyo pa din? So, wala magpapas. <laughs> and, uh, what I'm trying to say is that hirap na hirap ang kalooban nyo or natin whenever we hear that we need to read, write an essay. Pero looking back, since grade 1, wala kayong choice. Tama-tama. Wala, tama. kayong, wala kayong choice kundi mag-sulat uh, ng essay. Mula grade 1, sabi ko nga, sige nga, sino sa inyo nakapagsulat ng autobiography? Ilang beses kayo nakapagsulat ng autobiography since grade 1? Ako grade 1, syempre. Tapos grade 2, grade 3. Parang tuwing papasok na lang tayo sa school. Or tuwing merong quiz, may essay part. So, anong mahirap, anong madali? Padaliin natin. So, the three-part essay, kaya siya tinawag na three-part, of course, because it will just be have, it will be having three parts only. Um, pwedeng three part structure, pwedeng imrad, that's what we will be discussing. But we will be focusing now to the three part essay structure, okay? So, you have your modules with you para, yeah, ano ko yung whiteboard natin? Sharing. Yeah, wait lang. Tama ba? sharing sa inyo mga kapatid. Hello? Hello? Nag-stop na ba yung ano? Andito pa rin po. Yung, ah, oh, okay, wait. Nasaan na siya? I-stop ko lang yung sharing ko. How do you do it? What happened? Okay, stop sharing. Yan. I will be doing this one. Ipipin ko lang siya. Spotlight for everyone. Okay. Ayan. 
Okay. Nakikita? Okay. I, pasensya na ngayon lang to. I, I have my whiteboard because uh, I broken I broke my stylus. So, may, medyo ano lang tayo ngayon. You have your module. Am I correct? Okay. Basically, yes, sige. Para manjan kasi yung ano, anjan yung meaning or mga definition. Tapos, ito yung mismong gagawin natin for you to have it. Okay? Uh, ready? Okay, so we will be discussing the three-part essay. When we say three-part essay, I'm so malayo ako. Three-part essay only have one, two, and three. That's why it's called three-part essay, the IBC. Or the first one is the intro or the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. The meaning of each will be found on your module already. Basically, in intro, you just have to write it as is of what is the subject all about, what is the topic all about, just a brief discussion of it, or you can also include the stand. When we say stand, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. When we say stand, it is something that you um, agreed upon. It's your opinion, but we will approve it by having evidences in the body part. Okay? So the stand is your, uh, is it positive? It, is it negative? As easy as that. That's how you will have to do it. Is it positive? Is it negative? That's how you take your stand. So, in order to know, kasi di ba sabi natin, in academic text, hindi naman siya, uh, it should be impersonal, hindi opinion mo. So you have to focus on giving evidences on the body na magpapatunay dito kay introduction mo. Okay? Um, intro can also be questions. It could also include questions. But, please lang, mga kapatid, don't you ever ask question that is answerable by, by yes or no. Halimbawa, um, COVID-19 is the topic. And then you will ask on your introduction, is COVID-19 a threat? Is COVID-19 bad for our society? You know already the answer and it's not arguable. Wala tayong pag-uusapan The answer is yes and nothing more. So don't ask questions which already have answers like that. Okay? But if you have questions here in introduction, be sure that you will discuss it in the body. That's why you have to do evidences for, for me to believe in you. And on conclusion, if it's a question, you have to answer it. If the intro is a question, answer it in your conclusion. Okay? Ano pang pwede kay, kay conclusion? You could also uh, have summary. You can include summary on it. What, uh, what did you talk about? the intro, the body, and you can just put it in one paragraph and it's done. Basically, this is the three-part essay. Any question about it? Because after that, I will teach you how to write. You have questions so far? No. Are you sure? Understand? Yes, ma'am. Kailangan alam nyo what should be written here, here, and here. And you know when you read it, ah, this is the introduction part, this is the body part, and this is the conclusion. So in AYAP, you are not just writing, you will also read. So you should know how to write an essay and two, to recognize an academic essay. Okay tayo. Um, if there's, there are no problems, we will focus now. How will we write it now? Okay. Since meron na tayo nito, o paano tayo magsusulat? How will we write this? Sige. Before anything else, yung kanina, I told you, I want you to remember this formula, please. Because this helped me a lot. This is how I started writing. Um, I always call it as TS. TS stands for Thesis Statement. Not the thesis that you know of, not the whole research, but what is the topic all about? Or what is my essay all about? So how do I write this? Usually you can see this in your introduction. So always remember, intro may TS. 
the thesis statement. So how will I write it? TS stands for thesis statement, and I have this formula so that I can never forget it. I have T plus V plus P. I want you to remember this. Dito ako lagi nag start tuwing magsusulat ako. T stands for topic. V is for verb. Usually, linking verb is what I use. Pero pag medyo advanced level na, hindi naman na laging linking verb. And P is position. Or minsan esto or stand. Ano yung stand ko sa topic na to? Okay. Let's see. So, lagi kailangan may topic ako, may verb ako, at anong position ko dun sa topic na yun. Always remember, your position can be negative, positive or negative. Walang both. Walang or. Understood? Okay, let me give you an example. The topic could be, um, let's see, for example, COVID-19. The topic is COVID-19. I want you to write an essay about COVID-19 or the pandemic. And because COVID-19 is singular, so you just have to add, for example, a linking verb is. And then a position. Is it negative for you or positive? Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's a negative one. So if the, I already have my first sentence for my intro. COVID-19 is, pero siyempre hindi negative. You will think of a word to describe COVID-19 as a negative one. For example, COVID-19 is scary. COVID-19 is, uh, ano ba? Um, COVID-19 is a killer. COVID-19 is dangerous. O kaya kung gusto nyo hindi is, COVID-19 kills thousands of people. That is my introduction already. Nagkaintindihan? And then you will now um, expand it. Pero let me give you a, a tip. Tatandaan. Hindi lang si intro ang may thesis statement. Kada paragraph may thesis statement. Dito kasi tayo nagkakaroon ng problema. Ang ginagawa nyo, intro part pa lang, inilalagay nyo na lahat. Ano yung ibig ko sabihin nilalagay nyo na lahat? For example, thesis statement ng intro or ang topic natin ay COVID-19. Tapos sa intro, nilagay nyo na doon yung advantages, disadvantages. Ano pa? Inilalagay nyo na doon agad. Uh, reason, history, definition, background. So, ibig sabihin, intro pa lang, ubus na. Wala na kayong maisulat, which is wrong. Because introduction's uh, purpose is for you to write what will you be discussing. Or give me a glimpse, bigyan mo ako ng trailer kung ano yung essay mo. In doing so, don't discuss everything, but just give me a glimpse. Kaya nga usually, ako ang sinusunod ko is the thesis statement. Any questions so far? None po. Sure kayo ha? Siguraduhin lang. Uh, now, if you already have this one, the intro part, so next stop natin ay, ma'am, alam ko na po si TS. Okay na tayo dito ha? Sure, si TS. Naintindihan na. Ngayon, ang problema natin is nagsusulat na tayo ng intro. Wait, balikta din ko lang. Okay. We will now write an introduction. Kaya lang, ang problema natin dito, mga kapatid. Okay. Um, sabi ko nga kanina, ang tendency nyo magsulat ng isang buuan. Kaya kayo hirap na hirap. Eh, paano ngayon? Kasi ang task nyo dun sa inyong module, magsusulat kayo ng essay. Um, Mag-limit na kayo ng five. Five na lang. So, if it's a five paragraph essay, five paragraph essay, so kailangan ko ng five paragraphs, paano ko siya ginagawa? Pag ako, ganito ko siya ginagawa. Di ba? May introduction, body, tapos may conclusion. So, sa paragraph na lima, hahatiin ko siya. Usually, I would put 
one here, um, three here, tas one here. Kung bakit ang dami lagi kay body? Diba? Ulitin ko, ano si body? Evidences. So you have to put evidences here. So medyo madami siya. Alam nyo ba na pwede tayong gumawa ng 20 paragraphs? Kaya lang nalilito lang kayo kasi nilalagay nyo lahat sa isa. Sa introduction, one paragraph. The first paragraph. At kailangan daw dito, always remember, tatandaan nyo, sundin nyo lang lagi si TS. Kailangan may topic kayo. Ma'am, di ba ang topic ay COVID? Yes. Pero dito, kada sentence, ah, sorry, kada paragraph may topic. Um, papakita ko sa inyo kung paano siya. Okay. Kada paragraph may topic. Kada, yan, kada parts may topic. Ma'am, di ba COVID po yung topic? Oo nga, ganyan nga ginagawa nyo. Kaya sa introduction pa lang, nakakasampung sentences na kayo, which is wrong. An essay could, um, a paragraph could have at least um, three to five sentences. Okay na yon, Paragraph na siya. So kung five paragraphs to, ilang sentences ang kailangan nyo? Around 15 to 25 sentences. Siguro naman sa 15 to 25 sentences, di ba? And take note. Good news. In academic text, you can copy-paste. Angit lang yung term na copy-paste. But actually, you can look for sources. But you have to quote it. You have to cite it. Huwag niyong ariin na sa inyo. Yes, very good. Correct. Yun yung sabi ko, kaya kung gumawa dito ng 20 paragraphs. Pero kailangan i-reference nyo because you will be charged of um, intellectual... Uh, a violation of intellectual property rights. Kasi idea yun ng iba, wag nyo ako ariin na sa inyo. So what I'm trying to say here, you have COVID-19 as a topic. Mamat ang daming topic. Bawat paragraph, isang topic. Okay tayo? Paano yun? Halimbawa dito, sa, ta sa introduction mo, ang i-discuss mo lang, definition. O kaya background. Ano bang meron sa COVID-19 ngayon sa Pilipinas? Naiintindihan? Sa body, ang i-discuss ko, kailangan ko ng tatlong paragraph. So, kailangan ko ng tatlong subtopic. Sorry, mali pala ako. Ang topic natin ay COVID-19. But we will think of subtopic to discuss. Anong angulo ng topic ang pwede natin i-discuss? Halimbawa, on the body part, you can, ta uh, you can discuss about in this... Um, hmm, Effects of COVID-19. Pwedeng effects, yeah. But you have to be very specific. For example, um, statistics ng... Statistics. Pwedeng killing. Ano pa? Ano pa yung pwede natin dito? Tama yung effects, but you just have to be very specific. Dito yung negative effects. Okay. The stat statistics of killing. What else? Um, pwede nyo i-discuss dito si lockdown. Dito si lockdown, kawalan ng pagkain, food food uh, supply. What else? Pwede naman si vaccine. Are you getting me? Bawat paragraph, yes, po. iba yung pinag-uusapan. Thank you, Jordan, for answering. Bawat paragraph, you will discuss different things. But it's still related on the main topic, which is COVID-19. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, we can write 20 paragraphs. We can write the, the, the statistics of killings, the lockdown, uh, the food supply, how the government reacts on it, the vaccination, um, the school, how is it being affected, the econo economics, ilan ang unemployed. O meron na akong 8 paragraphs, mga kapatid. That's how you do it. And basically, when you go to conclusion, you just have to put the topic. It could be a summary. Ng lahat ng pinagsasabi nyo mula first paragraph hanggang fourth paragraph. Or it could be an answer to a question. Or it could be, uh, what do you call this, an advice or a challenge. Okay. Any question? None po, ma'am. Okay, very good. Are you sure? So I will be um, doing this record. Uh, we'll be putting up this record on our page so that you can watch it. If you have questions or you didn't uh, take note of that. Okay, um, what else? Answer. So, we already discussed paano ginagawa. This is a five paragraph. Eh, ma'am, paano kung ten? 
Basta tatandaan nyo lagi madami si body. Si intro, maglimit na kayo ng 1 to 3. Super dami na nun. Pero if I were you, 2 lang. Para lahat nasa body. 1 to 2, contento ah, kung 10 paragraphs, 1 to 2 is for introduction. Um, and then we have 7 or 6 here. And then 2 for conclusion. Ganun lang siya ang pinaka-ideal. Laging tatandaan, body uh, is the part na medyo bulky. So ginagawa natin siyang by paragraph. Okay? Any question? Um, because I will be discussing now. Kung wala na dito, kung nag-gets na to, bubarahin ko na siya because, sorry. Babalikan natin si TS. This is how you write a paragraph. A sentence muna pala. This is how you write a sentence. Ma'am, totoo ba? <laughs> We've been discussing this. Oh, sorry. Lobat ako. Wait just a minute. We've been discussing how to write sentences ever since we are young. But basically, there are times that we find it difficult to have it. Wait a second. Let me just... Okay. So, let's have this one. Um... Always remember TS. So you always have to follow. Uh, I won't write it. T plus B plus P. Tatatandaan na ba to? Sana tatatandaan. Kasi this is how you will write your whole essay. So, kung gagawa tayo ng isang sentence, level 1. I call it as level 1. Nung grade 1, dapat daw ito yung natutunan nyo. So our topic is, the main topic is COVID-19. Okay? So, at level 1, T plus B plus P. Anyone who can create a sentence using TS? Ang topic is COVID-19. I think sa chat box, you can put uh, your answers on chat box. I will give one example, okay? One example is uh, COVID-19 is deadly. So that's level one. I have the topic. I have the verb. And then I have the, the my position. It's a negative one. But you you cannot put uh uh COVID-19 is negative. Hindi ganon, ha? You have to think of words or on how to describe COVID-19 as negative. Okay? You can put on chat box your answer, your own level one sentences. And then the second one. Let's have the level 2. Paano si level 2? You can put um, in the Philippines. Oh, my settings na. In the Philippines, COVID-19 is deadly. Are you getting it? So from just having COVID-19, we have now longer one, and more information. Hindi lang siya pahabaan, okay, ng sentence. May dinadagdag kang information. Kanina, COVID-19 lang. Ngayon, what is the status of COVID-19 in the Philippines? Yun agad yung nasagot mo na tanong. That's level 2. Level 3. O, ang baguhin naman natin si position. So, in the Philippines, I want you to see the transition, kaya inuulit-ulit ko, ha? COVID-19 is killing. For example, as of today, millions of people already. So writing, huh? Are you getting me? So your topic expanded and your position expanded also. Nakita? You are giving examples. Kung meron kang stat, kung meron ka dito ang search natin ngayon, kung ilan yung number dito, for example, 1 million, so lalagay mo lang dito, 1 million lang of people. 1 million already died. Nagigets po. And the last one, hindi pa ito ultimate, hindi pa ito pang grade 12, pero pag na-reach nyo na ito, I'll be happy about it already. Number four, we will change the verb. Hindi na is, are ang gagamitin natin. And hindi na rin umpisa si COVID. 
Okay? What can we do in number four? For example, the spread of COVID-19 um, brought devastation in the Philippines, in the world, in all aspects. Take a look at this. Your topic is COVID-19, but you make a definite the description of it. Okay? And then instead of just using a linking verb is or are, you can use the word broad. Or the spread of COVID-19 kills all kills millions of people in the world. That's it. This is the leveling. But this is not the ultimate one. But if you can do this sentence already, then we're done. Do you understand me now? Yes. Okay. Hopefully. This is how I write. I write with outline and I, I plan it. It's not just I want to write 10 paragraphs tapos. No. I plan it one by one. So, babalik tayo dito sa diniscuss natin kanina, which is a three-part essay. So, basically, ganito lang siya lagi. Ito lang yung kailangan nyo lagi. Always remember, kada paragraph, isang topic. So, magsusulat na ako ng COVID-19. So, um, ibang topic naman para before we end. Halimbawa, um, let's discuss politics um, what is like to be a president in the Philippines presidency so what could be the topic on your intro presidency in the Philippines is that's level one am I correct so if that's level one sige nga. presidency in the Philippines is what is Mm -hmm. Yes, Jordan. Si Jordan ba yan? So, you can add uh, answers on sorry, on the chat box. Wala. <laughs> Ayan. Presidency in the Philippines is a very important thing to, to know. That's, that's one. It's positive. Or presidency in the Philippines is um, kind of rocky. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uncertain. We're not sure about it. Those kinds of things. Pwedeng you on. So either negative or positive, it's up to you. Ngayon, sa body, what will I be discussing? One, you could discuss what it takes to be a good president. Two, in the past, these are the presidents, and do you like it or not? Three, in the future, this is what I want or like to be, to have as a president in the Philippines. Four, um, I wish there is a qualification test for being a president. Are you getting me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ganun lang siya. Ayarin ako. <laughs> okay. Okay, if you don't have question, i-end ko na tong share, pag share ng screen ko. Pero I'll close. And then, ay, hindi ko pa, hindi pala ako nakashare. Ayan. So, ayan. Do you have any question about it? In general, let me just share my screen. Okay. Okay. In general, this is your module. Okay. In general, um, introduction is your purpose, why you would you write it. We will be discussing the different purposes actually in, um, in the future. And then you can you just have to describe what is my topic, what is it all about, um, um, do I agree, um, 
is it a negative is it a positive that's why we have to put a, a position in it on the body part you have to develop to answer the question what is the topic all about okay mm -hmm. Conclusion is the mirror image because of the introduction. Sabi ko nga, kung may tanong kayo sa introduction, sasagutin nyo lang siya kay conclusion. Kay introduction, pag sinabi nyo na um, this is my topic, this is my purpose, so pupunta ka lang kay conclusion, i-discuss mo lang what did you discuss about your topic and why is this your purpose. And the other one, last one, is the IMRAD. So basically, it is uh, IMRAD is Introduction Methods and res Results and Discussions. The introduction depicts the background. So ito, clear to. Pag IMRAD ang ginamit ninyo, ang introduction, background lagi siya ng topic. And the methodology, let your reader know your data collection, methods, research, instru instrument, and M. Uh, how it is being employed. Usually, pag IMRAD, meron kang gustong patunayan. Meron kang gustong patunayan. Kaya gagawamit ka or i-discuss mo sa kanila how did you obtain the, the information and you will discuss what did you obtain on that um, research. Sa results and discussion, summary lang siya. Ulit, sa IMRAD, ang introduction, discussion ng background. Pag sa... Um, three point essay usually pa iba iba kasi depende yon sa um, goal mo pero sa imrad structure kasi gagamitin mo siya kasi may gusto kang patunayan at may sina search ka eto yung nakuha ko clear tayo kung kailan ginagamit si imrad sa kasi three point essay so this is what you will do um, I given you this one it is included impact of technology and politics Ang gagawin ninyo ay fill out nyo lang to. Choose sentences. It could be one to three sentences per part. Alin dito sa parts na to ang nakakapag-describe ng mismong introduction? Kukapihin nyo lang yung sentence. Kung digital kayo, pwede nyo na lang siyang bilugan tapos lagyan nyo ng intro, body, or conclusion. Kung modular kayo, kukopihin nyo sa ganitong structure yung mga sentences, okay? Na nagpapatunay na ito ang introduction ng topic na to, ng impact of technology and politics, yung body part na nagpapakita na nagbibigay siyang evidences, and conclusion na mirror image. Tandaan yung word na yun, na mirror image siya na introduction. Das, nakakadalawa na kayong activity. And the last activity is what I can do. The topic is about the future gender equality. So I've given you this article the future of gender equality you need to use walang hindi gagamitin ng imrad you will use you will be using three part structure okay sa three part structure ng essay ninyo ayan siya you have to write five paragraphs so babalikan natin yung kanina nating diniskas if it's a five paragraph so focus lang kayo Focus lang kayo sa um, one, siguro one paragraph lang sa introduction, tapos three paragraphs for your body and one paragraph for your essay, uh, for your conclusion. Any question, guys? Mami, sa title po. Hmm. Kami na po yung uh, Yeah. Um, always remember when doing an essay, please lang ano, practice ninyo na yung topic nyo ay wala sa title. That would be hard, but at least try. Hindi yung COVID-19 yung topic natin as you will write, COVID-19 is deadly. Tapos hindi nyo makikita mo sa introduction. Tandaan, si topic ay summary ni introduction, pero hindi siya copy-paste. Okay? So, if you could choose, for example, uh, the, 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 uh, the killer that we cannot see or the Pwede yun. The invasion. The invasion. Okay. Very good. That's correct. That's how you can do it. Instead of saying COVID is a killer, there's no sense or there's no suspense on it. Sorry. It has sense, but it's not kind of, not attention grabber. Okay. Any question, guys? None po. Sure. Ako kaya magtanong. Yeah, ano, sino yun? Impact po ba nung sa politics po? Paano po ba yun? Sorry? Impact of politics, di ba meron tayong ulitin ko? Sige, share ko ulit. 
Uh, di ba meron dito na parang table? Ito siya. Yan. Yan yung gagawin nyo. Kung digital kayo, dito sa topic na to, underline nyo na lang or bilugan yung mga sentence. Asan dyan si introduction? And hindi lahat ha. Alo yung pinaka nagdi-discuss ng introduction. Alin dyan yung body? Ilalagay nyo siya dito. One to three sentences, okay na yun. Nung gagawa po yung sarili po ng introduction? No. Or... No. Ulitin ko. Ma'am, di ba, ma di ba eto, po i-extract lang? Yes. Ito si essay. Alin dyan si introduction. Alin dyan si body. Alin dyan si conclusion. Ilalagay nyo lang siya dito for us to to know na naintindihan nyo na etong part na to si introduction, eto si body, eto si conclusion. Ulitin ko, si AYAP kasi ay hindi basta magsusulat kayo. Si AYAP ay mag, mag, magbabasa din kayo. So, kailangan alam nyo din siya. Any questions so far? None, ma'am. Are you sure? Sa module, okay na tayo? Okay, hopefully, encourage nyo yung iba na umaten ng online classes natin kasi sa mga susunod, we will be discussing um, how to read clearly para mas madali kayong maintindihan yung essay ninyo. Pangalawa, meron tayong summarizing. Eh, discuss ko din doon step by step, sentence by sentence kung anong ilalagay nyo. We also have outlining. Paano bang mag-outline? So, and many more. So, please encourage them to attend kasi module itself is good. Yeah, you can learn from the discussion na nakalagay. Pero there are things na hindi mo siya mailalagay sa, as written one. It's better to attend. And take note, guys, kung akala nyo patapos na ang essay writing ninyo dito sa senior high, um, sorry to say, but it's just the beginning because in college, all the term papers will be in English aside from Filipino subjects. So, kung gusto nyo makasurvive in college, at least marunong ako ng three, ng five paragraph essay, at least baka naman hindi ako masingko or bumagsak sa subject ko. That's why I'm, I'm really encouraging you to attend classes. Kasi ito yung kailangan nyo talaga for your college. Kasi lahat doon, puro term paper. And term paper is part of academic text. Which is yung ginagawa natin ngayon. Wala kayong choice. Pang pwede po bang practical na lang? Walang ganon. <laughs> Okay tayo. And all subjects in college are, are being taught in English except for Filipino most of the time. So wala kayong choice kundi um, whether gusto nyo yung subject or hindi, wala na lang kayong choice kundi gustuhin na lang siya. Okay? I want you to encourage everyone to attend this, uh, the, the next classes because this would be really be important to you. Any questions? So that, okay, if there's none, we can end it. Um, thank you for your time and please do submit your um, output. I would appreciate it if it's in digital form so that you will have your e-portfolio para makisa Green Pen Republic. And din yung format sa GC natin, sinabi ko sa inyo. So that's at the end of the quarter, meron kayong kompleto. If it's, um, pero kung meron kayong dahilan kung paano yung hindi nyo siya mapipicturan or hindi nyo masasend siya sa messenger, you have to message me and we will talk about what you will be doing. Pero basically, lahat kayo gagawa ng portfolio. So kung hindi siya digital, iipunin natin siya sa folder. Yun yung isang way ng paggawa natin. Okay? If there are no questions, thank you for coming. Um, see you next time. Okay, this is Mom Jenna, and this had been your AAP class week one, lesson one. Okay, enjoy the rest of the day, and please do finish your activities already. Okay, bye. Bye, po. Thank you, po. Thank you, then.